So here's one podcast kind of just going through a few things I'm thinking about at the moment. My plan is to do them kind of weekly and anymore I'm going to have more condensed and just full of good content. But at the moment, just back from, so it's January 9th, so as was the day the Christmas trees come down. Just back from Fort Ventura uh, from a holiday with, the, with my family. And yeah, kind of getting back into the ring of things in Ireland, which is pretty, pretty damn cold. And there's a bit of a miserable vibe compared to Fort Ventura. I like uh, paddleboarding. I was in paddleboarding there and lots of exercise and vitamin D and stuff. So it's a good lifestyle over there. Definitely would like more, uh, more sun. But yeah, I guess the thing that's kind of on my mind at the moment is the power of this AI chat GBT. I, I've been aware, it's been on my radar, the AI is coming for jobs for a few years. So I read, I went down the rabbit hole in 2018 or 2019 and read a good few books on it and consumed a load of podcasts on it. And I remember thinking, I'm preparing for it. So I'm not, um, I realize that you're going to have to probably start your own business, get a form of income. AI could take jobs from any angle. But I always thought it was going to take accountants first. Well, first, um, blue collar, then low level white collar. So lower level lawyers and stuff like this. But accountants are vulnerable because AI can do accountants work quite easy for some reason. Because it's like bookkeeping. And then onto this. And then I thought creatives were safe. That's what all the books and everyone anticipated. Creatives would be safe. So I, I've been kind of angling myself as a crypto writer. And it's funny that ChatGPT came for writing first. And another another group of people you would have thought would have been very safe were graphic designers on on Fiverr. You would have thought, right, these guys are ahead of the game. They're they're in the gig economy. They're producing creative work. They're entrepreneurial in a sense, and they're up and start up starters and stuff. And it's funny, Dali, which is ChatGPT's kind of cousin for photos. You put in, you describe the image you wanted to, to create. It'll create it. You can ask it to create different versions of the same image so you can kind of create a video with it. It's amazing. So it's funny. It came for copywriters and graphic designers first. But I would guess that accountants are pretty vulnerable at the moment. I got Revolut Business uh, Revolut Business account, which is pretty good. And yeah, the lawyer I was using recommended I didn't use Revolut Business he said, use this one. Revolut Business is tough to get signed up for because I was having a few issues at the beginning. And then sure enough, I get into Revolut Business and it does, you do all the bookkeeping yourself. So you put in, you pay for something and then you can track it as an expense. So you put in, you pay, say you pay with your credit card for whatever, um, something on Amazon, then just track the expense. And then it, whenever you're paying your taxes, you have it all tracked there, so you don't need the accountant as such. My gut instinct is that the AI is there already for accountancy and stuff like that, but just there's people holding off. They don't want to scare everyone. That's just what I think. I don't know, obviously. But just that I know that Google have been doing AI since they've got, they did AI demos in 2018. And they haven't, they haven't shown us like that's not open to the public. So they're keeping it behind closed doors. So God knows what they're capable of at the moment. In a sense, the chat GPT, it's amazing, but maybe it's just the scraps being fed to the public and the guys behind the scenes are using way more advanced AI. That's very likely. So yeah, it's interesting and it's kind of scary, but yeah, another AI thing I've been using recently is called Tweet Hunter you write in the tweets you want to deliver at whatever times it means you can have a good Twitter profile, but just you can do an hour's work on a Monday and it would cover you for the whole week. And the benefits that are countless, you can imagine how amazing that is. And it's only a new software and it's pretty phenomenal. You can do uh, auto DMs. I've done a few on it. It's boosted the, uh, the followers. Not hugely. I'm, I'm on 180 now, but from from very little and I've tried putting out tweets and gains no traction so auto dm is you kind of put together a product a digital product for me it's like different course related to crypto 
just stuff that people would find useful and people retweet it and like it and follow you and the software the ai tweet under it tweets them the the, the product super cool so yeah um other cool stuff at the moment let me think let me think let me think Mm. So this is the kind of ebook I wrote, and it's just a printed version of it, obviously just from a photocopier. But I'm just been creating the like a video version of it today. So speaking it all out loud, so it's kind of like a upsell on the digital book. Yeah, it's really good. So it's it's about crypto market cycles and how I found out about it in 2019 and then I delved in deeper through the book. It's super useful stuff. Like if uh, you think about how many people lose money in crypto or how many people buy the top or don't have a clue when the bottom is going to be, when the top is, when when is it over? I just kind of go over it. Likely times where it's going to be high, likely times when it's going to be low based on previous cycles. So the four-year cycle has kind of been what, it's been what it's been so far and what it will likely continue to be because of the Bitcoin halving every four years, which has such a shock on demand, a shock on supply, which shocks demand. And going to all coin cycles more in depth as well. But yeah, so here's, I suppose I'll leave her there. Um, maybe I'll do another one this week. <laughs>